Hi, thanks for joining me. Perfect Partners During September. What a great name. So during September only, if you've got the piggy stamp set and you want the dies, then you can get the dies. So there are six stamp sets with matching dies available just this month so just want to point that out so you don't miss out uh, but tonight I'm going to be sharing with you just one of these the apple harvest and there is just so many things that you can create with not just the stamp set but the dies alone even so I am going to be doing some colouring with you with the stamp but I'm also going to share with you some other samples that I've got made using mainly just the dies to show you how versatile they can be. So as I said I'm going to do some colouring with you. I have got this image that I've pre-stamped in Sahara Sand and we're going to be colouring with a combination of blends and pencils. This was something that I saw Melody Hyde do. She works for uh, Stampin' Up! Head Office and uh, she did the combination of the blends and the pencils and I really really wanted to give it a go. So for the apples of course I've got three reds. I like to use three colours. Two of the same colour family and one darker or even one lighter just so that I have the three different shades of course you can do this with two it is just something that I uh, like to do now I like to start with my darkest color and this is cherry cobbler that I'm starting with and I like to add that first or you can start with your light I think it's just how I was taught how to use my blends to start off with so I'm looking at my card my image on my card and I'm looking to see where I think that the light might come from that is usually the first thing that I do now I'm outlining the areas that I think will be the darkest and I'll add uh, my cherry cobbler to that and I'm not doing big strokes I'm doing little sort of strokes and I'm adding that in. Now the next step I'm going to do, I'm using Poppy Parade as my other two colours, the dark and the light Poppy Parade. So I'm going to use my light Poppy Parade to then come in from the dark. So you start in the dark area and you pull out from that so that the colours blend really nicely together. And this just helps the not having any harsh lines when you're colouring. So I'm pulling that out uh, into the middle of the apple with the light colour and I've just noticed that I have missed a dark colour so I'm going to come in with my dark colour and I like to use just the fine tip end. The pens have a paintbrush end and a fine tip end and I do prefer to use the fine tip most of the time. Now I'm going to come in um, after I've just topped up a little bit with the light um, where I've added the dark colour. I'm going to bring in the dark poppy parade which is like a medium because I've used the cherry cobbler as my darkest colour. And then I'm going to once again pull out from my darkest colour, the cherry cobbler, and into the light colour. And I'm going to blend these three all together. Obviously I will go back again with the other colours. That This is just how I like to start my colouring. And then I'll come back now with my light poppy parade. Keeping that part where I think the sun will be shining on the apple lightest of all. But as you can see they all blend beautifully together and there's no demarcation line of start to finish off the colours. Now I'm going to bring my pencils in and I have got a cherry cobbler again and the movements I'm going to use when I'm adding the pencil are just little flicks of colour. I think using the pencils are fantastic because it really does add that bit of extra texture to the image. As we know apples aren't perfectly shiny and smooth and adding these little short little lines with the pencil really does add that bit of extra texture. So I'm just going over the darker areas with the cherry cobbler adding those 
marks and then I'm going to come in with a basic grey and I'm going to just use that right in the very darkest areas just to add that shadow to the apple. It really gives it that 3D look. Oops, now you can see, yep, bring it into camera and hopefully you can see that added texture and interest to, to the apple. And you can keep going adding colour for as long as you want. Sometimes it's really hard to stop. You always think, oh, I'll just add a little bit more of that, a little bit more of that. Um, and it is uh, such a great thing to do colouring, I find. Such a relaxing and um, peaceful thing to do. So you can get quite carried away. Now this is the colour lifter and great tool to have Obviously, if you make mistakes, you can lift up the colour, but also it's fantastic for adding just that little bit of extra light to your project if you want to lighten up an area. So really handy one to have with you all the time when you're colouring to add that to your project. Okay, so let's get on to the leaves. I'm going to start with dark granny apple green. Once again, with the pointy end, with the... Um, sharp end or um, not the paintbrush end anyway bullet point end that's what you call it bullet point end I'm going to start with that and I am going to just color the leaf once again taking into consideration where the light would be so um, more on the right hand side and I just color down the middle of the image and along the veins with the darker color and then I'm going to come in with parakeet party uh, dark parakeet party and I'm going to add that. That's my lightest colour and I'm just going to add that drawing down from the dark colour once again and once I've finished that I'm going to then use the light granny apple green which is my medium colour and blend those two together. And when I'm happy with that, I'm going to use some pencils once again. And the first one I'm going to use is Garden Green. And that's quite a dark green. I'm going to add some more interest around the veins and the areas that would be darker. Just little movements once again not too heavy and then of course I'm going to come in with my basic grey and add even more shadows to give that image a really fabulous 3D look and just to finish off I'm going to use a little bit of pumpkin pie just add a little bit of orange to the leaf just to give it that more realistic look and there we have an apple and one apple and one leaf but that gives you a really great idea on how to color each one and if you look closely you can see all the added texture and depth and interest to those images okay so of course I've prepared one earlier and I've die cut that out. So I've colored all the leaves and the apples and the branches and uh, really pleased how this turned out and all the colors and the interest. I really do like the combination of the Stampin' Blends and the pencils. I think it really adds a lot to your image. Okay, so, okay, so let's start putting this card together. We are going to use thick basic white for the card base and I've done four and a half inches by four and a half inches and I'm going to use a sew saffron mat to pop on the inside and I'm also going to pop one on the outside as well. Such a lovely soft yellow, this So Saffron. I do really like it. And 
we go. And just to share with you the paper that the DSP I'm going to be using, it's Gingham Cottage. Absolutely amazing. Lots of colours. Gingham is really on trend at the moment. Lots and lots of colours. And I'm going to be using the So Saffron one, obviously. And we're going to add that on top of this matte. Such a fresh summery feel, even though I know apples are for autumn. Uh, we are coming into summer here and I just thought I wanted a nice summery feeling card. And so have done a nice soft summery matting on the background. Okay. Right. So next we're going to add the uh, apples. And I'll pop those on dimensionals and add to the front. So I pop this up in the top left hand corner. There we go. Love how that combination of the red, the green and the so saffron works together. Really makes the apples pop. Now I've pre-stamped the sentiment and there is a die with these apple harvest dies for the sentiment. But firstly I want to tie a double bow to put underneath the sentiment. So being very brave here and tying a bow on camera, I'm going to do two loops and I'm not going to tie a knot. I want it uh, not to have a big bulge underneath the sentiment. So just going to tie it and twist it and put it, put it down. So just checking that it's the right size. And I'm going to use a bit of tear and tape to secure it on to the front of the card. So once that's in place, I uh, put some dimensionals on the sentiment, making sure that even though I haven't got a knot, I still leave the gap um, underneath the sentiment so that there isn't a big bulge uh, underneath a dimensional. So popping that on, And once that's in place, I will then trim down the twine. I like to do it with it still attached initially. I always overestimate how much I need and tend to waste quite a bit. So I find if I do it with it still attached to the twine, I, to the roll, I don't waste quite so much. So it works really well for me. Okay, so we've still got one other element that uh, I want to add to the front of the card. I stamped and die cut three of these apple blossoms. I have coloured them in with the one of the tonal blends, the tone blends set, and this is the SU1000 and it's a sort of a pinky pinky tint, which when I looked up at apple blossoms, they were a beautiful pink in the middle uh, with a little bit of yellow. So perfect for that. Uh, and just adding a bit of so saffron into the middle as well. So want to add those onto the card. So three beautiful blossoms on the card. I think they really help finish off the card. Just thinking maybe there or here. I think we'll go with there. And then of course we've got to add some sentiments. These are the sentiments, embellishments. And these are the self-adhesive backed sequins. And I have the red ones. It's sort of like a pinky red that I will add to the card. Got to always have some beautiful shiny embellishments on a card to finish it off. Always a big decision though on where to put them. Oops, that one's got a bit lost. Oh, where's it gone? There it is. Pop it on. Okay, so just have the 
inside to do and this is a textured stamp that comes with the stamp set and I'm just using so saffron just add a couple of these on the inside for a bit of interest and it just then has the continuity from the outside really and we will adhere that on to the inside of the card Quick and easy, as long as I can get it open, here we go, and oops, I'm going to wipe it, wipe it right off now, there we go, and that is the card finished, beautiful, just love how this turned out, all the colour combinations, the yellow and the red and the green. Now let me just share some of the other cards that I've made with this bundle. So this one I have just colored the same way that I colored those apples. I've colored this one big apple in this clean and simple card. I have uh, just blended the background and used that texture stamp a little bit, die cut that apple and popped it on the front. I really do love clean and simple. It is one of my favorite type styles of card. Um, so effective, so easy to do, but so effective. Now this card, I have used mainly just the dies. So I watercolored some fluid 100 paper, and I used some greens and flicked some water and some white ink on there to add a lot of texture. And then I cut the leaves out. Now the dies come with about eight leaves, so just with one uh, run through the machine you've got eight leaves which work out just makes it work out so quick and easy so easy to do to cut them out and add to your card now for the stem which you can't actually see that much at the end after watercoloring this piece I just added some early espresso long brush strokes to give it that woody sort of texture uh, for the loops this piece here cuts out as you would imagine, but also has these fine uh, loops as well, which are perfect for adding to a card. Just really like that added bit to that um, die piece. And the flowers I pre-cut out of uh, Fluid 100 as well, and then just watercolored the middle. So these are the three cards, three quite different techniques, watercolor, blends, and pencils. Um, so I hope you enjoyed them. I really enjoyed creating with them. You can make so many fabulous things with this stamp and die combination. So make sure that you don't miss out and get yours this September uh, for this and the five other ones. So thank you for joining me. Take care.